noticed what is the purpose of the contexts in the, uh, all the modules? I noticed that you added yeah. that context.tf. And I looked at it and just, I bet you give me a quick yeah what the purpose of it is yeah i and just i'm going to start just showing a quick example um the, the actually the master of it is on the call right now so we will uh, i'll turn it over to jeremy in a second i just wanted to show like why it's kind of cool is um i looked open the long wrong file so are you are are you do you well i'm going to start from the beginning you know all of our cloud posse modules use something called terraform null label it's yeah, called I, null, I use it. Yeah. yeah, it's called null label for historical reasons because it was based on the null provider and Terraform modules are supposed to use that. Terraform advanced as a language. We don't need to use null anymore. And it's a relic from that, but it's not worth renaming it and uh, adding extra confusion. So uh, an example of that is if I look at like our public subnets, and so we make sure all of our resources can be deployed any number of times in an AWS account without having to worry about the author necessarily being consistent about how he's naming his resources. So by, by defining a label, now this happened to be a more advanced example uh, where here we're, we're, we're adding tags to an existing map of tags and uh, I wish I had a simpler example right off the bat, but um, we used no, to have this, yeah this all makes sense i i do i use this module for like all my terraform stuff yeah so it used to be that you know you had to specify all 15 parameters to invoke this module and what happened was that some modules would invoke five of them or pass five of them and some modules would pass 10 of them uh that, that were updated and it was really hard for us to manage all of these parameters to define a label. So like the order of your labels, the name, namespace, stat, stage, the tag, um, the environment. Uh, the ID label limit is the, other, is the other thing, is yeah. that we, this was recently added. And now we want to add that feature. It was recently added. We want to add that to all 135 or so of our Terraform modules. How do you do that easily? when everything is cluttered up in these um, individual assignments scattered throughout files, not even all in main TF. Yeah, so having a consistent interface to all of our modules and uh, context TF enabled that. The, it was an epiphany kind of, um, uh, Jeremy had a little while ago where you know, we were defining all those variables in just variables, but then we were commingling them with all the other variables the module defined. And then you had to be the human differ to figure out like what was missing or not. So instead now we just export a single context file like this one that we vendor into every one of our modules. And I would say like 60% of our module, I don't know, 50% maybe have been updated to this. We're going to get 100% updated in, in the next couple months um, to use this because it's, it's a, it's a must-have. It's the only way we can scale having this many modules and having a consistent interface to use them all. Um, one of the things I absolutely love is that we now have this context in every module that uses it. So you can always just call module.this and get the namespace and get the environment and get the stage and get the tags and get that normalized. And, and then it's also a huge. Yeah, and enabled is a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah. So a consistent way of knowing if you've uh, have the feature flag for enabled uh, there or not. So all and of then, our modules have a feature flag for enabled now. And that means that when you enable or disable that module, all of the modules it is using get enabled or disabled automatically. Recursively, yeah. Cascading. Yeah, yeah, cascading, better word, uh, correct word. And, uh, and then the context. So then we take this map that we have here, and now you can always just pass it by, context, by, by, by reference, kind of. Um, the comments above explain how to use it. Yeah. Here we go. 
I will say that this is one of my favorite new things um, because you know now you don't need to make a ton of labels in your um, in your root modules. You can just create one you know context. You can copy this file or you can create a label manually um, and then you know pass around context and then provide overrides in you know specific resources in root modules and it's really um, you know ends up making it ton less there's a lot less usage of uh, individual labels uh, and it's pretty sweet yeah so so this could limit like like right now in some repos I have I'm using the module like five different times because of the amount of differences that I need between yeah. So by using this, I could limit that. So, so now you can, def with, with less code expressed, you can just say like- It's public is exactly right. Yeah. So we're using, this, we're using this module to label both the public si subnets and the private subnets, right? And so the way we do is we reuse this label, this context, but we add the attribute public for the public subnets and private for the private subnets. So they get different names. All right, I totally just understood everything now. My brain wasn't connecting everything. Awesome. So, use, so what most people do is they do string concatenation. Um, under the hood, we're doing that. The problem is there's a variance of how people want to their labels to look like. And this supports all of that. And like if you want to use dashes or not use dashes. Uh, and another example is um, to null label, uh, we have a Open PR, this is more like a proposal right now is from the community. But you know, he, he wants to add a feature flag to enforce lowercase tags. And that's a case. What if we instead expanded this so now we can support title case, lowercase, uppercase, snake case. And it's just setting one feature flag when you invoke the module in the first invocation of the module and every resource name generated thereafter follows your strict convention on how to generate labels. Does the module support a colon in the key name? Uh, we don't, well, so that's a good question. I don't know if um, we strip out, I think we have some, well, here to answer your question, and that's another good uh, uh, incidental question. I'm just getting back to my, all right, so, a normalization is part of what the, is in scope for the module. And that's ensuring that labels don't have characters you're not allowed to have. And it's somewhat opinionated. Some characters are, valid, are available in some situations. Here is our, um, our default uh, allowed list of characters. But you can just override this at the root level with the characters you allow. Cool. And then uh, the regex is changed. So by default, it's alphanumeric Sweet. with hyphen. In the Thank previous, you. In the previous examples, where was the this defined, like module.dis? Um, say that one more time. It's defined in the context TF file. Oh, uh, yeah. So let me show how you do use this con this now. So every one of our modules now, like here's, here's like this Terraform AWS dynamic subnets we copy in the context file. This is vendored into each module. And we have a disclaimer at the top saying, don't edit this file, right? It's com it, it, this is the authority of it. And it's right there on line 21 is the answer to your question. That's where it's defined. Yeah, thanks Matt. Yeah, exactly. So there's, 